Last time we talked about divisibility by nine and how you check if a number is divisible by nine by adding up its digits. Now we only did a five digit number, A, B, C, D, E, but I hope you could see how that argument would generalize to much longer numbers, in fact, as long as you want. And I hope you could also see how that argument would generalize to divisibility by three, because remember what we did was we said that that equals actually 10,000A plus 1,000B plus 100C plus 10D plus E, which we then split up as 9999A plus A, 999B plus B, 99C plus C, 9D plus D, and E. And we said that because the top row of this is divisible by 9, all we have to do is check the bottom row. But of course, the top row of this is also divisible by 3. So if we're doing 3, still all we have to do is check the bottom row. Good. Now, what if we were trying to do 11? What could we do in that case? Well, let's try a slightly shorter number, just to make it a bit easier for the time being. Divisibility by 11. So A, B, C is equal to... Uh, no, it's not. 100A plus 10B plus C. So how can we split this up to get a top row that's definitely divisible by 11 and a bottom row that we can then check? Well, 99 is divisible by 11, right? So we can split that up as 99A plus A, and that's still going to be useful for us. What about this? Well, we can't use 9, because that's not divisible by 11. But if we use 11, we can say that's the same as 11b minus b, and then we get a plus c at the end. So this number is the same as the one we started with. The top row is definitely divisible by 11. Definitely divisible by 11. So all we have to do is check the bottom row. So A, B, C is divisible by 11, precisely if A minus B plus C is divisible by 11. So what about if we had another digit on the end of there? Let's try doing a four-digit number. So if we have A, B, C, D, which of course equals 1000A plus 100B plus 10C plus D, what do we get? Well, what do we get for 1000? What's the nearest number? Let's start at this end and see, because we know that this is going to be just a D. And we know that here we want an 11C minus C. We know that here we want a 99B plus B. So what do you think we might have here? Well, let's think about it, shall we? Um, 99 is definitely divisible by 11. So 990 is definitely divisible by 11. Now, if we add another 11, we get 1001. So that's definitely divisible by 11. Of course, you could just stick that into your calculator if you wanted and see what the nearest number is that's divisible by 11. But I haven't got a calculator here. I'd like to encourage you to do it without using the calculator. So here, I'm going to put 1001A minus A, because we're trying to get a total of 1000A. So this number here, if we add it up, is equal to the one we're trying to do. So in this case, we get that A, B, C, D A, B, C, D is divisible by 11, precisely if, this means if and only if, or precisely if, well, we've got to add up this bottom row now. So we've got a minus A plus a B minus a C plus a D. So to check divisibility by 11, I hope you can guess what the general answer is. 
and that is that we've got to not just take a sum of the digits, but a sort of alternating sum, where we take, we start at the end with a plus and then take a minus and a plus and a minus. So supposing I write down a number um, 367911, what I've got to do is start at the end with a plus one, okay, and now minus this one, my, I've got to duck or something so you can see properly, um, plus this one, plus nine, minus seven, plus six, minus three. Right, so we've got um, six minus three, that's three, five, so that equals five, if I did it right. Let's try that again. Three minus four plus five minus one plus one is five. So this number is not divisible by 11. Not divisible by 11. Of course, if I then stuck a six on at the beginning, six, three, six, seven, nine, one, one, then I've got the same sum up here with an extra six at the beginning. So that one will come to 11. Six minus three plus six, minus seven plus nine, minus one plus one equals 11. So this one is divisible by 11. I wonder if you can prove why that result is true in general. I've only done it for four digit numbers, but I want to be able to do it for any digit of numbers. And this is, this is um, more complicated than the case for nine and three, because we've got this complicated business of the alternating things going on. This will be much easier to prove when we've done, or if you've done, the principle of induction, and also when we get used to doing modular arithmetic, which talks about what remainder you get when you divide a, a number by another one in the integers. You might also wonder, what's the point of knowing about divisibility anyway? Well, division is really, really important. And knowing how very, very large numbers divide up into products of very, very of other sort of very large numbers is actually the basis of all of modern technology, the internet, encryption, codes, everything is based on the principle of whether or not you can factorize a number. And basically, factorizing large, huge, huge, huge numbers is really hard. And that's what the entire of the security of the internet is essentially based on. So we will talk some more about divisibility and factorizing and primes as we go along.